From the land of lakes, this is 10,000 Takes, brought to you by Minnesota Score Radio. Wally and Eric back for yet another week as we slice and dice the always busy, always topical, super saturated Twin City sports scene. And Wally, it's episode number two of 10K Takes, the TV version. There you go. Now we made it through another week. They had us back for some reason. <laughs> no cancellations yet. Well, they didn't watch it very carefully last week, in other words. It was a holiday. Yeah, that's Everybody true. checked out. Thank goodness for the holiday. Did you just stuff yourself uh, over the holiday? Yeah, I did. I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to work it off later today. Yeah. But uh, it, was, uh, it was good to have some time away. Although, really, Twin City sports, there's no downtime. No. Come on. You had the prep bowl. Uh, you had the T-Wolves in the wild going. And, of course, the Gophers and the Vikings and... It was Purple Pain Sunday out there in NorCal. We'll get into that later. What else is due? But how about gopher giddiness on Saturday at Huntington Bank Stadium? They get the axe, they win the border battle, and they have the field rush. There was a scrum of thousands. I was there. I saw it. It was pretty cool. What's going to happen if they ever go to the Rose Bowl? Yeah. it's not, it, Minnesota fans treated that like they just won the national championship. <laughs> Uh, no, they won a game over Wisconsin, which you should win a little more often than once out of every 17 years. So, no, it, it was a good win for Minnesota, obviously, to beat Wisconsin, um, a ranked team. Well, they ranked 15th in the nation coming into the game. And, uh, you know, you get the ax back. You, you win a trophy game. Actually, you've beaten them two of the last three years now, or is it two of the last? It would be two of the last yeah. four years, yeah. So, you're on a 50-50 deal, which is about what it should be. It shouldn't be, you know, twice in 18 years. It should be twice in four years. That's that's how it should happen for Minnesota. It's the first time since 2003 at home. Of course, that's something. That's the last. That's time. the Metrodome for right. our younger listeners, or <laughs> viewers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, back in 2003 was the last time they beat them at Metrodome, and. Um, when they beat them a couple years ago, or 2018, I guess it was, was in Madison. So P.J. Fleck has a couple of signature wins on his resume. Now, does that mean he's going to go someplace else? Is he going to take a job someplace else? I mean, that honestly, that does – that question does come up. Well, you know, uh, Lincoln Riley was hired by USC on Sunday. Uh-oh. So he's leaving Oklahoma. <laughs> I immediately went to websites down in Oklahoma yeah. City and Norman Sunday night to see if P.J. Fleck's name was on anybody's list. I haven't seen it surface yet, but that is certainly a coveted job. I mean, Oklahoma is a powerhouse program. Bob Stoops is the interim coach. I think a lot of teams would like to have Bob Stoops as their permanent coach. Wouldn't but uh, I haven't seen P.J. linked to Oklahoma. Not but yet. But as you said... He got a signature win on uh, Saturday. Uh, he had one a couple of years ago against Penn State. You have the Outback Bowl victory. The other border battle he beat, Wisconsin, is certainly one of his uh, pinnacle wins. But, you know, I also look at this season as woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yes. If you find a way to win at Iowa or uh, beat Bowling Green in Illinois, you're ranked. You're going to a better bowl game. Maybe you're in Indy Saturday playing Michigan for the Big Ten Championship. So they did some good things, but I think they still fell short of the goal, which was winning the West. And you had to bring up that Michigan thing, huh? I did, yes. Uh, he, he's an Ohio State fan. They're also known as the evil empire of the Midwest. I don't know how uh, you come up with that. but <laughs> Hassan Haskins, five touchdowns on your Buckeyes? Yeah, the Buckeyes couldn't stop anybody. Wow. They looked... <laughs> They looked miserable, let's put it that way. Defensively, they looked worse than the Vikings did on Sunday. I'm going to call you out. You, you said you had a good Thanksgiving. He's lying. He did not. His Buckeyes lost to Michigan. His Browns lost to the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday night. The Vikings Both Harbaugh lost. coaches took you down. <laughs> Don't mention the word Harbaugh in Ohio this week. Yeah. Well, I am going to go back to the Gophers because that's the only plus that happened football-wise over the weekend. The Gophers win, the Vikings lose, and both of my Ohio teams lost. All right, so which bowl game do you want to go to? It's a lot of speculation right now, but Minnesota will go bowling. We'll know all that in a week. I think we avoid Detroit. No Detroit. I think you also avoid the Pinstripe Bowl in New York City. That'd be all right, too. (laughs) I'm hearing maybe Nashville, maybe Phoenix, possibly Vegas. Where would you like to go? Is Florida not in the mix? New Year's Day game, I don't know, with eight wins? Probably not. 
That would be highly unlikely. A lot of that depends on what happens this weekend with right. these conference championship yeah. games. I'm going to say Nashville or Phoenix are your front runners. I'm voting for Phoenix. Yeah, I think Phoenix would be <laughs> probably uh, the selection among most Gopher fans. And it, it's all going to depend on, you know, the number of people that Minnesota is able to bring. They did pretty well bringing people to, to that Auburn game at the Citrus Bowl a couple of years ago. What will happen this time around and how many people are going to show up? And that will affect how things go moving forward, too. So, um, wait and see, I guess. There's no question. I mean, back in the day, the Gophers had a reputation for traveling poorly. Now that's flipped because they brought a ton of fans down to uh, Tampa for the Outback Bowl two years ago right. when they knocked off Auburn. So, the reputation is, hey, Minnesota fans will show up. And bowl game people, they want their hotels full, restaurants and bars full. They want everybody to bring down their cash and spend it. So, uh, we'll find out in a few days where they're going to go. And we'll also get some predictions from Daryl Thompson, who played for the Gophers and is part of their radio broadcast team as he reflects on that Wisconsin win and, and the future of the Gopher program with uh, the bowl game coming up. And the future of the Gopher program with both Tanner Morgan and Mo Ibrahim coming back next year. I think I, I was surprised by both of them, to be honest. I thought Mo Ibrahim, you and I saw him the day he got hurt against yep. Ohio State. We saw him walking through the, the bowels with of... the boot on. Uh, yes, with the boot on at Huntington Bank Stadium. And we kind of looked at each other and said, that's not good. And figuring, you know, in his final year, or what could have been his final year, he might have made a decision to say, hey, you know what, it's time to move on, go play football in the NFL, which he will. Um, but he decided he wanted to come back. He wanted another piece of this. You know, he wanted to be part of this. And then... Right after the game on Saturday, Tanner Morgan makes the same decision. Says, yep. "I want more of this." So, and, and it, it, you talk to college players, and a lot of them have the feeling is, you know, once this is gone, it's gone as far as playing for yep. your university. And I think that both of them that register. And even if you're Mo Ibrahim and you go to the NFL, it's still a job. It's a business. It's exactly. not college football. And you know, I've called Minnesota running back you. So imagine next season when they go to camp. The depth they'll have with Mo Ibrahim, hopefully Trey Potts comes back, and then these two freshmen, Bucky Irving and Kai hmm. Thomas, they have stepped up as well. So it could uh, be an interesting year for Gopher football. All right, stick around. Daryl Thompson coming up. And then, of course, we'll uh, break down the latest chapter of Purple Pain. Uh, this is 10,000 Takes. Yeah. Your Paul Bunyan's Axe Ticket. Hello, I'm attorney Lee Hutton. From my time playing football for the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers back in the 90s to my current work in the courtroom with some of the most high-profile cases in the country, no matter the fight, I am there. I've represented and won cases for major corporations all the way to the everyday individual, from family law to entertainment law, contracts to trial litigation. I'm committed to my clients in presenting their story. Please contact me at lhutton at thehuttonfirm.com. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, Ice Fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. This is 10,000 Takes, the TV version. Of course, you can catch us on the radio Monday through Friday on AM 1440, Business Radio Twin Cities, KYCR. Wally and Eric with you, and we're going to talk more Gopher football. And joining us in the Zoom room, good friend of ours, Daryl Thompson, part of the Minnesota Gopher broadcast team and their greatest running back in school history. And Daryl, First and foremost, uh, congrats on being a part of that win Saturday, calling the game high above Huntington Bank Stadium. Uh, it must have been a blast to see that field rush after Minnesota wins the Axe, 23-13 border battle victory, and, and that scrum, that gigantic party out there on the field. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? I'll tell you what, it was a lot of fun. It was fun, and it was, it was long overdue. You know, when you think about the last time that I saw uh, the Gophers beat the Badgers. It was 2003, and I was part of the broadcast team then. And it was, you know, we're in the Metrodome, and it's uh, unfortunately, you know, decades ago. So it is, a, it's a big deal for us to, you know, get on track and to uh, 
bring home the axe and, um, you know, win, uh, win one of our key border rivals. How far up the ladder does this bring the Gophers as far as the quality of the bowl game? Does it get them closer to New Year's? Does it get them in Florida or California or Arizona? What, what are your thoughts on that? No, that's a good question, Wally. I, I think it does. I think it moves you up significantly. I think you kind of, when you tail off towards the end of the year, um, you know, that people are concerned. And bowl reps are like, who's going to come? How many people are going to come? What's the mood? And when right. they show that, you know, the win against the top uh, top 15 team, the finale of the year, haven't won in a while, Coach Fleck, how our folks traveled to the Auburn game is going to make a big difference because we travel. We traveled with Kill. We've traveled really well with Coach Fleck and have some momentum here. And there's no doubt that people are looking to get the heck out of their, their basements, their living rooms, <laughs> get out of the state of Minnesota, go get somewhere warm for – three days, five days, whatever that might be. So I think it, it really, really bodes well for a, uh, a nice Florida or Arizona uh, bowl game. And, Daryl, the fan base and the support and how many people will travel, that's a huge factor on which team goes to which bowl, isn't it? Oh, no question. It's, it might be even more important than, um, you know, a lot of the other aspects. I mean, your record's important, you know, and the slot is important. But it, it comes down to – uh, two teams, they're going to take the team that travels more every single time. We've lost out on that in the past, and I feel like I think we really showed well, especially the last trip when we went to um, you know to Florida for the uh, the bowl game against the uh, the Auburn Tigers. Our team uh, and our community traveled extremely well, and I feel like we'll travel well again. So it's going to be it makes a big difference, a, a really really big difference. How much gnashing of teeth is there going on over at the U? having not beaten Iowa because an Iowa victory gets you into the big 10 championship. Obviously the loss to Illinois hurt Bowling green earlier, but the Iowa game was right there for the taking. You know what? You're right. It, it is a, it's a gnash of teeth, but you're kind of, you're like just wringing your fingers. Your makes your neck hurt, makes your shoulders hurt. It just mm -hmm. bothers you because, because it was there. You know, I think when you just go get beat, then you're like, Oh, we just got beat. But that was a game. We had an opportunity that the team played well and we did not win. We didn't have the success that we had, um, you know, like last weekend. So, yeah, it, it certainly hurts. And, you know, but you want to play in meaningful games. And now we're playing in meaningful games in November versus I'll just go do my job because it's fun. It's fun to talk on the radio and I, it's kind of cool. But, no, no, I want to play and I want to broadcast meaningful games. Fans want to show up at meaningful games, not just a, a token. I'm going to go there. I'm going to tailgate, have a couple drinks and – that's all about, you know, just kind of being with your friends versus supporting a team that's winning. And we have we have a team now that is that's winning more than their fair share. Daryl, PJ's trying to raise the profile and and uh, you know stamp the brand of the Gopher program nationally. And I think he's had some success. As I was driving in to record this show on I-94, uh, there was a digital billboard <laughs> that said, Congrats, Gophers, uh, Cub Foods. And I thought to myself, this is based on just beating Wisconsin and getting the ax. What's it going to be like if this program can ever get to the Rose Bowl? Oh, I think it'll be a tidal wave. I mean, a literal tidal wave of support for the Gophers. You mean the last time that the, the team has won a Big Ten championship is in, it's the Bobby Bell, it's the Ezel Jones, it's the Carl Ella ear of this uh, of this program. So it's been. It's been a long time, so the, the support and people coming out of the woodwork uh, will be huge. I mean, I, I saw it when we when we were um, playing that bowl game against the uh, Auburn a couple years ago. I go to this, you know, I'm working for Boulder Options and I'm running around town at different meetings, but I saw the hats, the scarves, the sweaters, the letter jackets, the, the pins, the coins, so all those things come out. Um, and if we are able to, um, you know, uh, go to a Big Ten championship game and win a Big Ten championship game, and finish in the top 10 in the country, I think it'll be a, a literal tidal wave of maroon and gold across the entire state. All right, I'm going to jump ahead to 2022, dare I say. Um, Tanner Morgan and Mo Ibrahim have both decided to come back. How much did Tanner Morgan's decision, how much was it affected by the fact that they beat Wisconsin and that Mo's coming back? Oh, I don't know. You know, I, I really don't know. I think it's, you know, um, Tanner probably has something he wants to prove. He's played well in the last couple of games. He, you know, I don't, I don't know any young man that doesn't want to play in the NFL that's a, a college player. So I think he feels like I made some strides here uh, at the end of the season. I'd like to show what I can do 
next year having a full year under my belt and getting, you know, it'll be the third year of, um, you know, Mike Sanford Jr. being the offensive coordinator. Uh, Mohamed Ibrahim uh, potentially coming back next year is also a big deal, although they have a lot of other backs as well. But it still, it makes, um, it, it makes a difference that, uh, you know, Tanner Morgan wants to come back. All right, uh, Daryl, quick prediction. Saturday night in Indy, Iowa against Michigan. Who do you like? I tell you what, um, I like Michigan that game. I just think they're just a little bit more physical and a little bit more diverse up front. So I feel like um, they'd be the, the team that will probably come out on top, although I would like for Iowa to win because uh, the West has not won that championship yet. Thanks so much, Daryl. Absolutely, you guys. Thank you very much for having me. Yep. He's gopher legend Daryl Thompson, now part of their broadcast team, right here on 10,000 Takes, your border battle ticket. From the first time you pick up a tuned-up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass-produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, Ice Fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle, with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods. Ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. Hello, I'm attorney Lee Hutton. From my time playing football for the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers back in the 90s to my current work in the courtroom with some of the most high profile cases in the country, no matter the fight, I am there. I've represented and won cases for major corporations all the way to the everyday individual, from family law to entertainment law, contracts to trial litigation. I'm committed to my clients in presenting their story. Please contact me at lhutton at thehuttonfirm.com. Wally and Eric with you here on 10,000 Takes, and we're going to talk some Minnesota Vikings now with former Vikings wide receiver Matthew Hatchett, who joins us in the Zoom room. Matthew, of course, has his own podcast along with T.O. Terrell Owen. Get your popcorn ready. Uh, did you have your popcorn ready watching the Minnesota <laughs> Vikings on Sunday uh, where they were really unable to generate much offense in that second half? Are they a playoff team as you look at them right now? Uh, well, yeah, my popcorn was ready. I don't think there was any thing to really make me eat it it wasn't that exciting you know it was kind of <laughs> just like a mundane game if you will but um i still think they're a playoff team you may need some extra butter this week against detroit uh all right you played back <laughs> well, in the day on those explosive denny green teams uh you were part of the wide out quartet of jake reed chris carter randy moss can yeah, you compare yeah. the tandem of adam thielen and justin jefferson with cc and randy moss uh, well, again, like I didn't say this, I heard a commentator say it, but uh, receiving core is only as good as their third and fourth receivers. So hmm. I think that, again, Justin Jefferson and Dylan, they're good, but I think the Vikings, like any good offense, are going to have to find a third and fourth receiver. I think the, the reason the Packers are able to be so good on offense is not just because of Devontae Adams, obviously, right? Their second, third, and fourth receivers, Aaron Rodgers will go to them in a heartbeat and make plays continuously and then come back to Devontae Adams. So, and again, I think with Cook going down, they might have to find their run game as well. But I think the Vikings to be a continuously good offense, you're going to have to find that third and maybe fourth receiver as well to continue to move the ball. Well, and a lot of times what makes your third and fourth receivers good is your quarterback. And uh, yeah. obviously we did not have that kind of day out of Kirk Cousins on Sunday against the 49ers. Um, unable to really make plays with his feet. And that's nothing new, really. But your thoughts on Kirk Cousins going forward? Yeah, I, I think it's the same. You know, I think Kirk knows his limitations. I know, again, he's not going to go run, uh, run around like Lamar Jackson, of course. But at the same time, he knows his strengths. And I think he's going to have to find that third receiver, if not a tight end. You know, again, a tight end system can definitely cause havoc on a defense. And, of course, a second uh, running back to come in and take some pressure off of Cook. And especially if Cook is down, you have to find a second and third running back. So, uh, again, I think Kirk knows what he has to do. He's got to win some games with, like, three minutes to go on in the fourth quarter. I think that's the only thing. 
Debo Samuel, he's a running back disguised as a wideout. San Francisco yeah. is very unique and novel in the way they use this guy. He had two mm. touchdowns on the ground Sunday against Minnesota, mm. five on the season. That's the most in the Super Bowl era. Do you like the way Kyle Shanahan uses him and tries to confuse defenses? Absolutely. I think those are the best offensive coordinators, the most creative ones. I think, again, you have to be able to do that. A receiver, especially when you have a certain skill set. Again, bigger receivers, 6 through 210 guys, are down the field receivers, like over the over the middle receivers, comeback type of guys. But when you have a receiver that with that dynamic of a, of a skill set, the Tyreek Hill ish, I think that's the way the Chiefs used Tyreek Hill about two years ago, and it made that offense dynamic. If you have one or two guys that you can move around and the defense doesn't know what they're going to do and how they're going to get the ball and get that guy touches, I think those are the most dangerous offenses in the NFL as well as college all right thanks matthew uh get your popcorn ready is the name of the podcast you might want to you, you, you might want to get your blood pressure pills ready if you continue to watch the vikings as they keep playing these uh, one score games he's matthew hatchet here on Ten Thousand takes eric and i will be back to wrap it up with our takes of the day after this time on stay with us Hello, I'm attorney Lee Hutton. From my time playing football for the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers back in the 90s, to my current work in the courtroom with some of the most high profile cases in the country, no matter the fight, I am there. I've represented and won cases for major corporations all the way to the everyday individual, from family law to entertainment law, contracts to trial litigation. I'm committed to my clients in presenting their story. Please contact me at lhutton at thehuttonfirm.com. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. Ten thousand takes on television. Wally and Eric with you. Thanks for tuning us in. You can also catch us on the radio, Marconi's invention, Monday through Friday on the Biz 1440. That's K Y C R A M between five and six p.m. in drive time. So there are uh, a lot of ways to listen to us babble. Yeah, <laughs> if that's what you choose to do. Yeah, you have options. So yeah. <laughs> we respect that. Okay, uh, takes of the day. Uh, are you going to be an angry American, cranky Yankee, giddy guardian, grumpy guardian? I know, I know it was a rough weekend for you. <laughs> uh, what's it going to be? We're back to that. Huh? <laughs> uh, well, I'm kind of giddy. Whoa. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> giddy. Uh, your Minnesota Twins came through over the weekend, uh, signing Byron Buxton or agreeing to a contract with Byron Buxton, $100 million over seven years. Really, it, it works in the Twins' favor as well as Byron Buxton. Buxton says he wants to stay in Minnesota. He wants to play his whole career here. Um, the Twins, of course, want a bargain, and so I think that they get a little bit of both. It's very incentive-laden. If he you know, plays X amount of games, he's going to get more money. If he wins the MVP, he's going to get more money. But for $15 million a year, which basically is what it comes down to when all it shakes out, uh, that's a bargain for a guy that potentially could be your MVP. If he reaches all his incentives, he could make $25 million in a given year if he is the MVP. To pay $25 million for an MVP, that's pretty good. Look at some of the numbers that guys like Trout are getting. They're getting more than that, and they're not necessarily the MVP every year. They are certainly MVP-type players. So I think the Twins got what they wanted. It seems like Byron Buxton got what he wanted. I think it's a win-win. So you are actually I am, a giddy guard. I am a giddy guard. You're in a good mood <laughs> in this final week of November. Uh, and I agree with you. I, I think I can just throw some names out there. Aaron Hicks, Carlos Gomez, David Ortiz, Eddie Rosario. The Twins could ill afford to see a guy like Byron Buxton right. walk and have him blow up somewhere else. So kudos to the Twins and uh, Byron Buxton. Agreed. All right, uh, my take of the day. I'm going to go on a rant. Uh -oh. I, I watch a lot of football. I've played football. I've covered football. I've coached football. 
I am tired of the game being over-officiated at all levels. Here we go. Wow. It, it's a <laughs> joke. Yeah. I am sick of taunting calls that really aren't taunting. I am just disgusted with these roughing the passer calls on quarterbacks. Put a dress on them then. I mean, my goodness, give them flags. <laughs> I can't stand it. And pass interference, bogus about 80% of the time. And in the NFL, these are spot fouls. It's hard to watch officiating, and not just the refs, but the rule makers, the people legislating this stuff in the offseason, the bean counters that run the NFL. You guys have made your game soft, like a marshmallow. Yeah, they've they have changed the game. There's no question about that. And I, and I think that the officials, especially with instant replay being sit, sitting there as you know as a backbone yeah. you know cuz now they now they rely on um uh, on the instant replay call so i don't know man i i, I get tired of watching i i think i texted you and i said i can't even watch football sometimes <laughs> because it's just so bad the officiating I, that text came in after hassan haskins fifth touchdown <laughs> For Michigan, by the way, in the snow. It was either that or one of Baker Mayfield's yeah. errant passes <laughs> on Sunday night. Yeah, it was a, it was a rough weekend, but it was it, it is terrible. It's hard to watch. Look, they had an opportunity to overturn that call on the uh, Thielen yeah. catch on Sunday, and I mean, you're watching it. You see the replay. Say, yeah, he got his hands underneath that. How did they not overturn that? They didn't, and they have the replay to look at. I, I'm not sure what's wrong with the officiating in the NFL, but. There's something that needs to be fixed for sure. All right, uh, Sunday in Santa Clara, uh, 49ers 34, Vikings 26, and Minnesota's still in the playoff chase. They're the they're the you know the, the final seed right now in the NFC, but that could change. Uh, Dalvin Cook banged up. We don't know his status for the Detroit game on Sunday in downtown Motown. But I, I want to see more of this young rookie out of Iowa State, uh, Kenne Nwangu. He's got two kickoff returns to the house this season. He had one against San Francisco. And I think if Dalvin is out, I know Alexander Madison is a very good back, but you're going to need some depth. Uh, let's get uh, Nwangu some more touches, not just in the kick return game. Yeah, well, he has as many kickoff returns for touchdowns as he has – uh, carries out of the backfield now. He he's got two touchdowns, one earlier in the season, and then one on Sunday. He's super fast. I mean Ooh. that that much we did Sprinter learn. Sprinter speed. Yeah, he he is really fast. If he hits a hole, look out, he is gone. But they're going to need some depth. I mean they they've got issues as far as depth all over the place now. Um, obviously the defensive line. They had a whole new defensive line in there from the start of the season. They're all gone. <laughs> Daniel Hunter's out. Michael Pierce is out. I mean, Everson Griffin's gone. I mean, the, the the line is completely different now on defense. They couldn't stop the run against San Francisco. Ooh. That's a problem. Kirk Cousins had what I thought was a bad day. I mean, I just he missed receivers. He missed he missed the center. <laughs> he went over trying to take a snap it, from his guard. It cost him a timeout. Yeah. Well, I actually thought Kirk Cousins and Jimmy Garoppolo both did not have their A game. Garoppolo was missing throws early. There was the interception to Harrison Smith, but I think he settled down. And, you know, the way Kyle Shanahan runs that 49ers offense with the pre snap looks and the motion and a lot of confusion, it works. Boy, Debo Samuel is an exceptional weapon for the 49ers, and, and he's an explosive player. But you talked about that Viking run defense, they got gashed. 208 yards San Francisco ran for. They've got to clean that up. Yeah, they really do. Defense is a problem. And uh, the injuries on offense with Dalvin Cook being out and now, as I said, all the defensive injuries. Um, <laughs> I don't know. If the Vikings win eight games this year, I think Viking fans should be happy. I think eight and nine might get them into the postseason. Where are they going to go? I have no well, idea how far they can go. I, I, with I just this got team. this memo from yes. the NFL offices. Uh -oh. If they lose in Detroit on Sunday, Ooh. they can't make the playoffs. Yeah. They'll be out of it. You're not, you're allowed. not allowed to go if you lose to the Lions. <laughs> you're you're officially <laughs> eliminated when you lose to the Lions. Oh, by the way, they are 0 10 and 1, but of course about half those losses have been uh walk-off defeats. So including one against the Vikings. Yes. <laughs> you don't assume anything. All right, uh, we got to go. Let's FedEx out those thank yous. One goes to Dave Weld, Stuart Devon, Zach Harder, our producer Rocky, of course Daryl Thompson and Matthew Catch it for Wally. I'm Eric saying so long. This is 10,000 Takes, your sports ticket.